Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation. This is Sandwalkers, a roguelike turn-based party RPG that I'm very excited to be checking out here today. I've been following it for a little bit here. This is a prologue, so more or less a demo that has been released coinciding with their new Kickstarter. So if this game looks interesting to you, know that there is currently a Kickstarter running for it. So in we go to check out Sandwalkers. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I've been, I've been very curious about it. I believe it's it's published by the same people as uh, Legend of Keepers, which we played quite a bit of. It might even be developed by the same people. I can't quite remember. Uh, it's a big day, MKA. McCall. In the name of the Council of Casts, I hereby name you our 14th caravan. Thito, Sasanko, Rej, and... <laughs> <laughs> Thank us. Uh, you now carry with you the hopes of the Makah. May Umama guide you. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, that said, you'll now take this with you, a present from the council. No, not for you. It's for the inhabitants of Yaya. Please pass on the kind wishes to the Makah tribe, to the Terrasser tribe. If you get that far, that'll already be a great help. I do like the inhabitants of Yaya. That sounds like something I would make up. You're in the tree city of Lekwasi. This is where your journey begins. Uh, in cities, you will trade resources to get valuable items, gather information, and replenish your supplies. I do know that there is a big emphasis on uh, exploration and general like strategy over the course of the, uh, the run as well. You are running a caravan, and you have, of course, your party as well. Uh, so yeah, you can trade resources to get valuable items, gather information, replenish your supplies. As you begin your journey, there is not much to do here. Click the buildings to get additional supplies, then press the button with the door to leave. Click the buildings to get supplies? I mean, do I have money? It says it takes, uh, some dollars. Oh, wait, there's no, is there no money? It's just gift of the inhabitants of Yaya. Okay. Pharmacy. Characters healed. Ah, okay. So there was that's where we get the supplies. Gotcha. Uh you know. Oh, gold is supplies. I see. Is that the idea? Either way. I'm I'm ready to head out. Let's check the council. Advice for us, but nothing more. Orchard, we got some fruit. Okay. Great. Gotcha. So we can just click through them on the bottom here. We don't have to go find them. Unlike uh, tales of past caravans, there was no guard of honor, no ovation, no sacrifice, or blessing beyond the usual words. The counselor came alone, by obligation. The 14th caravan, with just a teller, a botanist, a protector, and an anaromancer, left for the Fithi in total anonymity. We felt as though we were the last. Some would say that we were the first. All right. Now that you left Lekwasi, you start the exploration phase. During the exploration phase, you control the movements of your caravan. When your caravan moves, it reveals tiles that are at distance equal to or smaller than its revealed distance. Starting reveal distances to tiles. Tiles that you've not revealed yet are hidden. Yes. You can encounter various creatures, places, and situations in Uwando. Un Uwando. <laughs> Some will be dangerous, others can be beneficial. You can access the quest tab by clicking on the icon in the upper left corner of the screen. Keeps information about your current goals or the rewards you get once you complete those quests. The caravan tab can be used to see the status of your party members. It'll also be... Uh, here, where you'll be able to use items and equip objects. You can also use objects through the object interface in the upper right. Okay, so this feed. Oh, okay, that's feedback. This is quests. Gift for Yaya. Okay, give the inhabitants of Yaya a quest. Yaya. All right. Do we know where that is? I mean, I guess I can assume that it's going to be in this direction if there's the mountains back here. Okay, so there's a certain amount of supplies. Well, plus five. Cactus. Well, it seems like we should go there. Gotcha. So, for now, we're just trying to chart out things. Maybe we're going to get, like, random battles or something? Go to Yaya. Oh, okay. It is generally pointing uh, up there. You can tell. Gotcha. Solo animal. 
Gives us 15 food if we beat it. Seems like, you know, seems like why not? Let's give it a shot. Oh, no, this it's not even a fight. Medium herd. So right now we're just like collecting free stuff. Get wrecked. I do know that there is turn-based combat. Like, so I'm curious when th that's when it will pop up. So here's the thing. Can they move? I mean, I'm, go I'm going to attack. Like, whether or not, like, I should or not, I, I just need to see this entire, like, half of the game for sure. You'd enter a combat. This happens when you counter hostile creatures and people. In combat phases, you are trying to defeat your opponents while minimizing damage sustained by your caravan members. Each character present in battle has an initiative value that determines its position in the timeline. Oops, one second. Uh, all right. When all characters have played, a new turn begins. Characters have a life and a value of shield. Shield regenerates at the end of a fight. Life does not. If a character dies, uh, or if a character goes down to zero, they die. Yeah, I mean, pretty standard stuff there. Thank you. Okay, so is this where they're aiming? Because you did hit the bottom left, then you hit the upper left. Okay. So we're currently on this one's turn. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pixel art blown up always looks a little bit strange like that, but hey. So we can see what the moves do here. Can we see down here? Yeah. Deals six one rick damage. What? To the target of your choice and applies impaired. All right. Damage dealt reduced by 50%. One second there. I know that's paused. Okay. So it seems like these have cooldowns to them in the bottom right. It seems to be the case, at least. Cooldown of one, cooldown of two. So if I use it, probably will be a bit before I can use it again. Probably also means it's stronger, right? Six pure damage applies stunned if the target was, ab was about to apply a debuff. Uh, and applies galvanized itself. I mean, if they apply it to themselves, are they applying a debuff? Okay. I mean, a stun sounds good then. Both Teller and the target of choice lose their shield. Increase your loot by one. You know, let's go for this. Seems like it might be a good call, right? You, you are going to apply a debuff. Or at the very least, I assume open wound is a debuff. Yeah, okay, so you got stunned. So what do we got here? Two stacks of protection to an ally of your choice. Using the attack again changes the protected ally. Uh, generates nine shield, and the target generates nine. Target provokes all units. Okay. All units that are attacking single target. I mean, so theoretically, you have 36 shield already as a freaking snail. Big Orn. Detects places steeped in history and a four hex radius around the cav caravan. Okay, so that's like you have a passive that helps you in the overworld as well. And it looks like maybe a passive that would help in combat coming later. So it's 50% of the target's shield. I feel like I... Giving a taunt over here seems like a good call. Does it, like, all happen at once, then? Because that or I misread the ability. No? Seems, seems about right. Okay. Applies armor to an ally of your choice. They generate seven shield. Sure. Three damage to all enemies and applies mental weakness. Deal three damage to yourself. I feel like that's probably fine. Okay, do we have a uh, any kind of AOE? What's this? Two physical damage and applies impaired. Damage dealt is reduced by 50%. One of them is stunned already, so I don't know how big of a deal that is. Heals an ally and applies thorns. Reflects 50% of the damage back. I mean... They're all attacking up there, so that actually sounds kind of interesting. 
We're going to reflect back 50% of all damage they're doing. Or at least so I thought. Does it not apply thorns if they didn't get healed? Do they need to get healed to apply the thorns? That sounds like two separate things to me. Is that, I don't know. Defense, apparently there's like a, a full thing we can do there too. This guy's taking a bit of a hit. Going to apply Dizzy. Puts the speed to one. Applying Dizzy a second time. We'll replace it with stuns. Okay, they're all... They're literally... Literally every single one is trying to apply Dizzy there. Okay. It says 24. Why does it say 24 there? 24 there. 16 there. That's not how much damage you're doing, is it? That wouldn't make sense. Because it says you're doing 8. Potentially. Potentially. Maybe physical damage does extra. Uh, two seconds of protection. Damage taken from the next attack received or taken by the allied protector. I'm assuming that you are the protector in that situation. Man, there, yeah, there's a lot going on there. That's on cooldown. Okay. It's grayed out. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, they don't even have that much health. We should really just start smacking then, huh? If I kill, we steal a memory. Sure. I can't really tell how much health they have. Can you? I realize that's why I wasn't going aggro on the damage, because it's just it's unclear if they have a lot of health or not. This should do, like, tons, theoretically. This will only hit the front line, make you do less damage. Which sounds good because you're going to be doing a pretty big smack there. Increase the constitution of an ally by one for the duration of the fight. Not sure exactly what that means. Just want to reduce the damage output a little bit. We did get stunned there. Unwavering. Okay, so we got uh, dizzied twice. That's what did that there. Gonna probably do the uh, kill and mind steal thing. Don't know exactly what that did. We're stunned. Shoot. Okay, so maybe we maybe we don't care about that right now. Because you're the one with that move, right? Yeah. Sounds good. Three physical damage applies. Dizzy increases by 25% of the caster shield. I think maybe we do just get a kill then. Stunned. Yep, makes sense. Are you still impaired? You are still impaired. You're going to be attacking up there. You're going to be attacking back here, doing a little bit of damage. What? Yeah, in the context... I know what Constitution is in the context of other RPGs. What is it in the case of this game? Is it going to increase our max HP or something? Like, I don't know. We'll try out this. Maybe it's good. Are you going to apply a debuff? You're going to apply a debuff to yourself. I don't know if that matters. Like, does that count? It might technically count. No. It's it's applying a debuff. It didn't necessarily say to you. Still impaired. Are you dizzy? Nope. Okay, so we're taking 12 there. Not a big deal. 
protection, steel shield. Is that really like that great? I don't think it's like that great. Okay, so this is not on cooldown, but it's also not going to kill anything. Or it is on cooldown? Death Pulse has a cooldown. I thought that was a standard move. Okay, four damage to the front, increased by 50% if their resistance is below zero. That sure sounds like their resistance is below zero if their damage is increased, decreased by 50% there. Alright. Sure. Just do less damage. We'll keep our shields that way. We could kill. We could kill in the back, too. Let's go for that. All right. Yeah, there's some clarity stuff. I mean, it's early on. There's some some clarity stuff that's definitely uh, something I hope gets worked out, and I'm sure will. So that's still on cooldown, huh? Interesting. Boop, boop. What do we got here? Forgotten memories, scattered personal memories of a far-off ancestor. Maybe it's something we can only do once. Maybe that's what it's about. Like, you can only do it one time? That move? Okay. So we've collected that already. We could go all the way up here. It seems like it's worth it. Four to get 20 water. 20 food. And a little bit of distilled water. Two yaya. -ya. Little movements of one here. I don't, don't see a whole lot of uh, a lot of stuff here. Watchtower. I'm assuming this gives us like map reveal. It sure as hell does. Quest of some sort down there. Just like the rising and ebbing tide, Uwandan sands covered and uncovered entire cities. I'll listen to the spirits. Our Oniromancer meditated to learn more about the history of the city through reminiscence, <laughs> reminiscences carried in the murmurs of Piti. Crystal culture. Okay. Very curious. Okay, so they move. I, I was wondering what was up with that. Like, are they ever going to, you know actually cause a problem for us walking our way for now let's just head down to uh yaya the inhabitants were waiting for us but they did not expect such a gift impressed they leaned towards us then announced that they would help us thanks they spoke a bit of a silt pit <laughs> of a silt pit a rare form of terrain where tree cities could take root we could not have hoped for a better instruction for the next part of our journey Okay, so we can get uh, Apothecary, we can heal up everybody. Gotcha. Council suggested that we stay a while. Got a little bit of that. Alright, what do we got here? A perpetually incandescent sculpture. What are these for? What are they for? I mean, I would assume a telescope will let us, like, see further. This seems like a potion, probably. Hmm. Sure. Alright. Utility. It doesn't say exact... Oh, gotcha. So the plan is, uh... Go fight that punk. I can only assume. Alright. I'll search this time. Mother of Pearl Comb. Precious object for most hairy Uwandans. We got two of them. Okay. 
Ah, if we have a Hydromancer, if we have an Aeromancer. So if you have specific characters with you, you can do different things here. Gotcha. Heavy Stone trembled with the pressure of underground water. Unblock. It just shot a bunch of food around and uh, the tiles around us. Gotcha. The seventh caravan. The valley itself seemed to speak to us. Here lay the remains of the Rampants, Big Orns, and Mantelis. A macaw caravan that had vanished and perished along with the Fiti. We have found Alula, the seventh caravan. Listen, stay a while. The memories locked within the relics told us about the last moments of the seventh. More than 150 years before, they told us the location of a unique discovery. Without further explanation regarding its nature, what kind of discovery could be worth their sacrifice? No matter the risk, we needed to know. I mean, sure. Hit me with some more fish. I mean, I'm not going to say no. So the seventh discovery is up there. My god, there's just so many fish. Does it take... Yeah, it only takes one to move around on those. But like a big jump down is going to be a little bit more. We have so many freaking supplies. Oh, hello. What do we got here? Just they, they told us of a different location. We're managing to stay pretty cleanly at our, uh, our little maximum here. Our 200 supplies. How much does that give? 10? Yeah, we can go down for it. Probably shouldn't click too far ahead in case, like, I don't know if this counts as one move, like, as far as enemies are concerned. Salt. Also, what happened with that big guy? Do I have to, like... <laughs> okay. Reduce damage to dealt to members of the caravan when exploring the map during events. Some plants become edible. Interesting. Okay, so like those cacti are probably only turned into food because of one of the units we have with us. That's interesting. That's really interesting. The ruins only got bigger as we approached. It seemed to uh, seemed as if we'd never reached them. How could the ancestors have built such an immense and fragile places? Built have built such immense and fragile places. Enter. What we saw that day, no macaw could possibly imagine. The mural showed some sort of burned down tree forest. Was this the fruit of an overactive imagination, or did Iwanda once have a tree forest? Do you recall that butterfly attracted to our fire's ardent flame? Oh well, said he, better to shine for a second than live in the shadows. Could that butterfly even imagine? Could it even imagine by, that by burning it would carry away the entire forest? Took on the road once more, our minds filled with dizzying questions. Okay. Poem of the Gwempa. This is doing that sci-fi thing where, like, every four seconds you're getting a whole, like, a... Oh, the uh, Talapu in the Gwempa region of uh, New Talanapa. Yeah. I know. Oh, there we go. Okay, we can right-click to scroll. So you don't move, huh? Scorpacore impassable. The impassable Scorpacore. So I currently... I don't have another quest. All right, so shoot, like, am I supposed to go fight the Scorpacore? I will say, like, it makes most sense to discover previously undiscovered terrain. Oh, yeah, oh my god, the fact that we get to get down here with 50 is actually pretty cool. So, like, maybe heading to that direction is not such a bad call. Like, I don't know if that the Scorp Scorpacore is going to just start uh, moving towards us eventually or not. These lumbering hulks slowly cross the plains. One of them seemed to have been colonized by a small camp of collectors. Hello. Teller called out to the colonists in a language they recognized. They threw us a rope ladder. Hello. 
Perch, okay. It tracks dreams to perch upon its nose. See, I yeah, I'm not sure exactly what these are kind of like about yet. Maybe they just have more value depending on who you give them to. Like, you're not hairy, so maybe this would be, like, worth more on for somebody else. Giant sloth milk. I don't know why, but I want it. Give me your giant sloth milk. Okay. Kind of want to get into another fight here, see what's what. Random weapon. It also has some sloth milk in it. So eating that just gave me food. I'm assuming that this does this that does the same thing. This probably heals us. I would assume. Look out. We ended up face-to-face -face with a vagabond bearing ill-fitting and extremely worn clothes. The traveler held an object far more valuable than someone with such appearance should have and begged us to take it. Uh, sure. We saw no reason to refuse. The vagabond moved hastily onwards as soon as we take the possession of the item. Mere minutes later, a horde of pirates sprang out of nowhere. I mean, sounds good. I kind of want... I did say I wanted to get into another tussle. Okay. Generates three shield at the start of the turn. Look at that guy. Four air damage to an enemy column and applies weakened shield. Targets an ally yourself. They gain five shield and death rattle. Ah. You're targeting... Does it say who you're... T it looks like you're targeting yourself. If, if this is true and it's going to be targeting themselves, I feel like it should maybe be like a different color or something. Or shape. I don't know. Okay. Both the teller and the targeted choice lose their shield. Increase the by one. Eh. If they're about to apply a buff or a debuff. They're going to be applying a buff. Let's get them. They're not going to be attacking, so I don't really feel like I need to do that right now. Two physical damage, though. Fine. Like, it breaks both the armor. So, yeah, you did... Yeah, you did put it on yourself. And Death Rattle only lasts for two turns. That's not that bad. Four air damage into column and weaken shield. I mean, I think that's okay. I don't even think we need to defend that right now. Give him a smack. My memory. So we can't use that again for turn. Four damage. So you're already impaired. Five damage to all enemies in the front. Oh, 35 is how much you'd have left after that attack. Gotcha. That's not quite how I would usually have that displayed, but I suppose it's nice that it does the math for you. I guess I would rather weaken you. Okay. Increased constitution, two damage impaired. I could st I could either steal the speed from you or put on the vines. You like? Uh, 
so targets an ally or stuff. You're doing that again. Seven damage back there. I don't really care too much. I should have stole your shield on turn one. Maybe that would have been the way to go. You're intending to buff yourself to 13. Maybe we can steal that just next turn. Focus on somebody else. Are you dizzy? No. I feel like just doing a little bit of damage is a good call, though. Just get out of here. It's fine. Impair the bolt sounds like a good call. So you have death rattle. Yeah, I mean you're just gonna be buffing yourself with that like crazy. So we just want to kill you last, which is fine. Why does it say this is not doing damage? Find a buff. Yep. Get bopped. It's kind of like doing, you know, five damage. Don't mind it. Is it, is it because they're not at the front? Why does it say that I can target them? Or whatever. You're doing four damage in a column. I'm not too worried about that. I would assume. Wait, a, a column in this game should theoretically still be like this, right? Or are you going to be calling this a column? This would theoretically be a row and a column, but since it only highlights the one character, not the second. I'm not sure, you know. Damage shall reduce. Still going for you. It's fine. See, yeah, I don't get this. Why does this say it's not going to be doing damage? Six damage to target of your choice and applies impaired. Doesn't say it has to be front line. You know what? Screw it. Yeah, it actually didn't do the damage. Are you resistant to that damage somehow? That's something that was not explained to me. Ah, yes. You have a hundred you have a hundred resistance to that. You have negative a hundred resistance to that. Gotcha. Even with increasing the damage they take by 50%, the resistance is hidden on that menu. Gotcha. Interesting choice. And this says to the front and applies dizzy. Still looks like I can target them, but I'm going to assume that that is just not going to happen. But I also don't care. For the sake of science. No, it, it, it works. Even though they're not at the front, it means the front of the party as long as we can target it. Gotcha. I don't really care about that. Smack them. You're already impaired. I'll steal your speed. Should move you what? To the back? Move you back just one. Oh my god, this the snail is absurdly weak. Which is really not that surprising. Get you with a stun, because you are indeed doing a debuff there. And then we should be able to kill. Boop, 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 boop. Next. Alright. Alright, alright. Just explore some random thing. I kind of want to just go get bodied by the uh, impassable. Can we? Okay, yeah, we can't move. It would just be at a big angle there. 
Kind of want to just go get bodied by this uh, the final boss of the demo, I can only assume, is what it is. Just standing there, menacingly. Like, it doesn't really seem like I'm necessarily getting stronger. I mean, maybe that's just because we hadn't leveled up. This item is a memory. Oh, you're telling about... Okay. Full game, you'll be able to send it to Laquasi in order to unlock new elements for your future runs. Gotcha. Um, it sort of looked like we were gaining experience. Potentially, potentially. So maybe there is a reason to fight another son of a gun. I gotta be honest. Let's just go die to this guy. Let's just go die to him. I want to. I want to see what this fight's like, and then wrap it up here, as uh, it feels like there's not much else uh, in in the demo quite yet, which makes sense. It's a demo. The weather is unleashed here. Storm removes two shield from a, each allied character at the beginning of their turn. Gotcha. So you are weak to water. You're strong to physical. Deals 12 liquid damage to an enemy, applies sedated. I don't know what sedated is. Is sedated dizzy? Because it's, it's telling me that what dizzy is. 7 air damage to an enemy line and applies impaired. Okay. Dizzy. Impaired. Gotcha. You're going to be applying a debuff, so it looks like I probably can stun you. But you know what I want to do? I want to steal half of your shield. Steal your speed. One poison. Wait. Wait, what? Or I can just do 35 damage, more or less. I would rather just do the 35 damage. That seems ridiculous. Uh, applying impaired sounds really nice. Oh, you have a lot of health, man. The resistance is not below. Feels like this is going to be the way to go. We can reduce their, their resistance for later. Implies Dizzy. We could get going on a stun, hopefully. You're intending to hit both with, honestly, not that much. End gains 10 shield. Yeah, let's, we'll just start going on the Dizzy. I know that they don't take as much of that resist. You know, now's probably a good time to get a stun in while we still can. And then we'll wait on the dizzy. So theoretically, you're stunned. Skips the next action. So dizzy does put their speed to one as well. You know what? Sure. I feel like this is actually going to be not too bad. So you're already stunned. So there's no point to do that other thing. Sure. Whoop. That was the stun. I'm assuming you have... Oh, you don't have the resistance to it now. What the heck? Really? Seems bizarre. That is a lot. That is a lot. 
Don't mind if I do. This just stays forever. You poor sap. Theoretically, you should get stunned again. You absolute poor sap. So now you have unwavering. I'm going to steal your speed and put on a little bit more poison. Hopefully shuffle you, yep, all the way to the back. You are not doing a debuff. You're going to be hitting there for, for, honestly, you know, not even that much. <laughs> you poor idiots. Oh my god. That was not even close to hard. That was easier than the other fights. Okay, so there is no experience. I, I was misreading the health for experience bars. Uh, gotcha. Congratulations, botanist. Thank you. You have planted a new tree and made countless discoveries for the future of the Maca and Uando. Oh, thank you. <laughs> collect, collect, collect. Uh, end of the 14th caravan. You've completed the Red's Dream experience. Of course, that was just a foretaste. <laughs> you can try it again with a new character, the Hunt of the Mantillus, or the Hydromancer Flying. I mean, very, very interesting. I mean, I'm just going to say, like, you know, uh, I I'll give my feedback elsewhere. But let's see, what is that? If I just hit new run, is that what it's about? Or, like, I can swap characters? You can play with two new characters in combat exploration. You'll bring more differentiation between the runs that way, including the weather system, more in-depth random generation. Gotcha. So is it like we're going to be drafting out here? Draft. Gotcha. Oh, look at that. Huh. I mean, yeah, there's some really interesting ideas here. I think that there's, like, a lot of um, clarity that needs to be fleshed out and streamlined in combat, I, I think, is really the biggest area. Like, um, I feel like the... Maybe it's just... It could even just be the UI, and I feel like there's certain information that needs to be, uh, like, more readily accessible. The moves uh, are just... They're presented in a way where it's... They seem really absurdly complicated. They're really not that bad. And I just... I really do think that the uh, the biggest thing is going to be the UI, actually, which is, is not too bad. Like, I think the, uh, the in-combat UI is making things seem a lot more clunky than they actually are. Um... It, just because of the devoid instances of information that you that you need and like things being laid out in one contiguous block instead of having like the keywords be kind of like more off to the side so it doesn't feel like everything is so every single block of text is so wild um you know and not having the actual numbers on health is a little bit you know i feel like probably a good call good call to add like maybe that is there i'm sure it was on the uh, the right click menu but like honestly it shouldn't be there. It should be on, like, by the health bars, at least when you hover over them. Um, like, that that kind of thing. Other than that, yeah, like it's there's an interesting loop potentially here. I think adding even more interactive elements to the, uh, to the map. Obviously, we saw lots of similar events, uh, and I'm sure that the full game is going to have a lot more of that. So, I'm very curious. I'm very, very curious what the game is going to have uh, to, uh, to offer when it is out-out. Uh, but for now, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep my eye on it and see where it goes. But alas, alas, that is that. That's going to do it here for today for Sandwalkers. My name is Retromation. I cover indie games every single day with an extra specialty in roguelikes and roguelites. If you enjoyed this early demo of the game, do consider checking it out on Kickstarter. If it is your jam, uh, go help support the game over there so it can become something greater. That's going to do it. Thank you, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.